If you have a hairy pussy, listen up. Today, I will be discussing if pubic hair is unhygienic. This is a topic not traversed by many. So it's understandable if you're unsure about what is true or not true regarding pubic hair and vulvas in general. Before you reach for that razor or that wax strip, let's clear up some hairy misconceptions. So a 2016 study showed that 60% of women groom their pubic hair for hygienic purposes. So is it a myth that pubic hair is unhygienic? Yes. And I brought receipts. So before you comment like, oh, gross, that's disgusting. I just feel more clean if I shave. Are you really going to argue with science? Because spoiler alert, there is no science that proves that pubic hair is unhygienic. And in fact, there is science that maybe suggests quite the opposite. Now, how you groom yourself is totally up to you and your preference. But if you choose to keep a little hair down there, you are not dirty. And here is what. Pubes may actually help protect against certain infections, including STIs, UTIs yeast infections, vaginitis. Completely going bare down there can potentially make people more susceptible to these types of infections. I'm not saying it's unhealthy to groom. I rock a George W. Bush and I trim up the hedges. But let's start with the STI conversation because this one's quite controversial. Extreme hair removal, meaning like taking it all off, especially shaving, can lead to small nicks or cuts on the skin. These microcuts in the inflammation can increase your susceptibility to certain infections, especially ones spread through skin-to-skin contact. There was a recent study done in 2024 where they looked at the effect of pubic hair grooming and women's sexual health. The study concluded that pubic hair groomers had higher odds of contracting infections compared to non-groomers. A 2018 study published in the Journal of Sexually Transmitted Infections also saw a correlation between those who groomed and those who contracted STIs. However, there have been other studies done. There was a small one done with uh, university students in Ohio. While a smaller sample size than the other studies, that study concluded that there is no increased risk between pubic grooming and STI contraction. So I'm not saying at all that shaving causes STIs. And it's important to consider the flaws in these studies. And this goes for both sides of the coin. I'm not trying to just push pro-bush down your throat, okay? Some studies that prove that grooming and STI contraction are not correlated didn't take into account sexual behavior, sexual activity, previous STI history, condom usage, timing between grooming and intimate encounters. Some studies did take into account these considerations and still concluded that there is a correlation. Some researchers say that those who wax or trim are also just more likely to be sexually active and therefore higher risk of contracting STIs, which like there's a lot we can go in onto that and maybe that's another video. And pretty much all of these studies are self-reported because how can they not be? So we also have to take that into consideration. So obviously there are other factors other than just pubes. So what I think of this data, looking at data from both arguments, is that while pubic hair removal can be correlated huh? to STI contraction because the micro cuts on your skin do increase your risk of getting an infection, this is true. It doesn't cause them. Cassell, if you're messing with someone who has chlamydia, pubes or not, if you're not using a condom, you're going to get chlamydia. Don't have sex because you will get pregnant and die. At that point, pubes aren't really going to help or hurt you. On a similar note, when it comes to UTIs, yeast infections, vaginitis, can Bush prevent these? One 2023 study published in the Scientific Reports shows that going bare down there is not associated with risk of developing UTI, but it is associated with a higher risk of recurrent UTIs. Biologically, some people are just more susceptible to getting UTIs depending on where their urethra is located on their body, like higher or lower. And if you're one of those people who struggle with reoccurring infections, Maybe growing out your hair will help. This is because the function of hair on your body as it is everywhere else, but specifically down there, is to be like a bouncer for your coochie club. The hair protects the area and traps pathogens and debris and bacteria that would otherwise enter the body. So if the hair is not there to serve and protect... I don't see how you can hate from outside of the club. You can't even get in. You get what I'm getting at? This logic carries over to yeast infections and vaginitis as well. We talk about the vaginal microbiome being very important to overall hoo-ha health. So here's something to consider. Hair follicles produce sebum. This is an oil that actually prevents bacteria from reproducing. Too much sebum, bad thing. Too little sebum, also a bad thing. So removing hair eliminates sebum's natural defense mechanisms, which can lead to microbial imbalances. If more bacteria is getting into your coochie via micro cuts from shaving, or just not having your coochie club bouncer there to protect, your risk of developing an infection does increase. And so does irritation, itching, ingrown hairs, etc. So it's definitely almost extra hygienic 
to have a little hair down there to prevent things from going wrong. A lot of people are also against pubic hair because they claim that it causes friction during intimate acts. I feel like this is a load of bullshit because actually like if you shave and you have stubble, that definitely creates friction. Having the hair actually acts like a cushion and prevents that skin to skin contact that can lead to infections. Think about how sometimes after you shave and you put on clothing like your underwear or pair pair of jeans, your clothing like really irritates it. That's because you don't have that hair cushion. I'm not saying you have to grow an unruly bush to experience the benefits of pubic hair. Like, a trim is fine. A lot of people also love to claim that hair is smelly and makes you smelly. Let's get this very clear. Natural is not synonymous with unhygienic. A coochie will naturally have a to it. That is prevalent with or without hair. This is only a concern if the odor is foul, fishy, or really strong. While hair does contribute to odor retention, because as I mentioned before, it traps that bacteria, the sweat, prevent it from going into your body. It also holds on to pheromones better, which is a hot, sexy, and cool thing, not an unhygienic thing. You'd really have to be making effort to not clean down there for hair to have that strong of an odor retention quality. If you sweat a lot, the simple solution is just to shower, like a basic human being. We have like hair on our heads, okay? I have a lot of hair on my head. My scalp gets oily and you know what I do? I wash it. And no one says that the head on my hair is gross or unhygienic. It's no different anywhere else on your body. And shaving your pubes does not exempt you from basic personal hygiene practices. Like it doesn't make you more clean. Everyone still needs to shower every day and you don't need to do anything special. Like just use warm water and like, a non-irritating, non-scented soap. I don't feel like going into my bathroom to get it, but I highly recommend the Sweet Spot Labs Microbiome Balancing Wash. You can use it all over your body. It's a really nice, gentle, moisturizing cleanser, but it's also coochie safe, so you don't need to get anything special for like your body and then something special for your coochie. I would actually encourage you to stay away from like a lot of scented coochie-related products. And if you do want something scented, they have a vanilla one, which smells delicious. Bottom line, pubes or not, you do need to be bathing yourselves regularly. This is basic personal hygiene and this plays more into a role of how you smell down there than hair does. Hair or no hair, man, woman, or anyone else. If you're unhappy with your natural smell, consider factors like drinking water. Are you hydrated? Your diet, are you eating whole foods and lots of veggies? Are you using products down there like douches and cleansers that could be offsetting your pH? Are you wearing breathable underwear in fibers like cotton? Sure, you might be holding on to sweat and odor if uh, it's not breathing down there. The best cotton underwears are from Cherry because they are made wide enough down there to actually fit both of your lips. None of this coochie floss that we're seeing everywhere. They're super comfy, they're breathable, they're made with organic cotton, and they're cute and comfy enough for every day. If you're wondering if your coochie odor is normal or not, just go to the gynecologist because I am not a doctor. But I can do a separate video about odors and what they could mean. And men, let's stop with the expectation that we have to smell like roses down there because that is just, mm -mm. we don't need to smell like roses down there. We need to smell like coochie. That's not a bad smell. Well, it shouldn't be at least because if the healthy, normal, regularly balanced coochie smell is turning you off, I'm going to hold your hand when I say this. You might be gay. Men, women, and everyone should be cleaning themselves before they're intimate with someone else. I think that's just a level of basic respect before you allow someone to be licking your bits. That's my opinion! Anyway, there you have it. Science proves that having pubic hair is not unhygienic. Wow. So free the bush, fuck the patriarchy, and groom how you please, being completely aware of all of the risks including itching, irritation, ingrown hairs, rashes, all those things that come with shaving, waxing, and hair removal. Having hair down there is becoming more normalized, actually. I talk about it a little bit in this video if you want to give that a peek. And I want to know, have you experienced more or less infections having hair or not having hair down there? I know once I grew my hair out, as well as doing other lifestyle changes, I stopped getting infections altogether. And they used to be quite reoccurrent for me. So what's your experience been? Comment below, subscribe, and follow for for more Kushi related content.